Hey everybody, it's Kara from the She's the Owner podcast. And so we've decided, or I've decided I'm going to start having couples on the show because it's fun and it's kind of funny watching couples try to navigate through this conversation in front of each other. And so, because everybody has different views. So I have two of my very best friends, Keenan Marshall and Carrie Wilson on the show. So this is probably the first time I think that I've had like friends that I've known before I started all of this and before I started all the journey. So it's kind of a different spin on it. Um, Carrie and I met, th- what, feels like 20 years ago, but it's not, what was it, maybe like seven years ago now? Seven? Mm-hmm. And I guess Keenan too, because that was just around the time you guys got together. And her and I have gone to, well, the three of us have gone to Tony Robbins events. We, we've definitely been doing some personal journey, personal development work together, but I really just want to have, I feel like this is a couple that has many of the qualities that I think a lot of people need to appreciate and understand and hear more about. And I don't, the thing that I find so beautiful about it is that they're not, it's just seems to be natural. And I've seen, I've seen them together from the start and I've seen this natural evolution of who they are. And I would say they're very much in the role of divine feminine with a hint of masculine left. Um, and then Keenan is very much mature masculine. And still, I mean, everyone always has work to do. There's always that wounded kid in all of us, et cetera. But I feel like these two really have it handled. And so it, it's kind of a testament to saying, you don't necessarily have to go and do all this crazy work on yourselves that you can, I mean, they're, they're you know, Carrie and I talk about religion and a lot of that comes from, that's her background and that's a lot of where her, um, ideas of masculine and feminine come from, but I don't know. I just feel like you guys have it super handled. So introduce yourselves, um, and then we'll just kind of go into the questions. Why don't you go ahead? Thanks. Hi, <laughs> I'm Carrie. <laughs> um, I want to start by saying I think I don't think we have it fully handled. That's for sure. Um, but I find it interesting what you said because earlier we were talking and just kind of preparing for this call. Um, and we said almost the exact same thing that you said and that for us, like with the masculine and fem- feminine energy, it wasn't something that we focused on particularly, but it was something that just sort of came to us naturally. And then over the years, as we've learned about it, um, it's something that we're practicing I guess yeah if that makes sense yeah so thank you for the intro Carrie (laughs) Keenan (laughs) who are you Keenan tell us about you I am uh, Keenan Marshall I'm um, currently 35 years old Uh, you know, I, to be honest, I, if I had to say anything about myself, I would just say that I'm uh, wanting to be a super loving father. Um, I'm an, just trying to be a good man, period. <laughs> and he is a good man. You're both good. I said you're both good men. I'm no. a good man. Yeah, you're a good man. <laughs> okay. So let's dig in. So I guess, and I'll just sort of do like the tennis match. I'll just put it to one, one of you and then, you know, jump in whenever you want to. What if you've got something to say, say it. So Carrie, for you, what does feminine energy mean to you? Like what, when you think about when you're in your heart, because, you know, we always talk about being from your head to your heart, when you're in your heart and in your feminine energy, tell me a bit about what you think or, or I should say feel that is. Um, So for a long time, I didn't know exactly what that was, to be honest. Um, But I think in like the past couple of years, um, to me, it just means not being in control all the time or not feeling like I have to be in control all the time. Um, Being submissive and not in like a, oh, you're the man and I'm going to bow down to you type submission. Um, But trusting in my partner and not feeling like I have to be the one to make all the decisions, 
the one to take control in every situation. Um, being in my feminine means that I can just, you know, I wake up peacefully knowing that Keenan and I have some sort of um, balance in our day um, and that I don't have to worry about a lot of the things that I used to worry about before, I guess. Um, so really for me, it's like a, sa it's a safety being in my feminine is being confident that he and I balance each other out and that um, I can trust him to, to keep me safe. Yeah. So that, that is one of the major pillars of everything to do with masculine, feminine energy and polarity. And, and so ladies that are listening, when we take that power away from the man, i.e. we try to control everything, we're trying to criticize them all the time, we're trying to uh, close off from them emotionally and physically, that puts them in their feminine. But what happens is that you st once they're in their feminine, you're feeling less and less safe. And like the pillar for us, for a woman, is to feel safety. Like I would say out of the three things that really represent um, being comfortable in your feminine as a woman is the safety piece is the biggest one, financial safety, physical safety, emotional safety. And so what Carrie's saying is like Keenan has done, she's backed down. And when I say back down, I'm not talking about, like you said, I'm not talking about submissive as in he knows everything. I know shit. I don't know anything. It's like this, it's sort of like, and I said this a couple podcasts ago, it's like we're exhaling, like you just take a deep breath and you exhale and you let him show up right. in this incredible way. Because if we're always overbearing and critical and all those things, the man eventually goes, well, fuck you. I don't need to help. I don't need to be here. What's my purpose in this relationship, et cetera. Right. And then that safety is gone. So, so women, when I'm saying you have to, um, surrender, this is what carries exactly, exactly what I think she's done. She's surrendering to let Keenan show up and he does beautifully. I see them all the time and it's beautiful and, um, but it's work, right? It's not because, and talk a little bit about that, Carrie, like her and I come from pretty similar backgrounds. There's a lot of challenges, adversities. And I think as women that are strong like us, um, it's, it's difficult because we grow up thinking if I'm not in control, shit's going to hit the fan. So maybe right. t touch on that a little bit. So that's exactly it. Like if I had to describe my life or my life before, that would be it in a nutshell. Like if I'm not in control, then literally shit's going to hit the fan. So, you know, my background, as you know, like my childhood was not stable at all. Um, I moved multiple times. And like, when I say multiple, I mean like I lived in like say 30 houses, went to 13 different schools. So there wasn't structure, there wasn't stability, there wasn't safety. Like I didn't feel safe. And as a result, um, I feel anxious a lot of the time or I did feel anxious a lot of the time. So that's something that I'm working on. And you mentioned, you know, it being, you know, we work on it. It's not something that, you know, every day we wake up and everything's in balance. Mm -hmm. There's definitely times where we're like, I have to work on, like, I need to work on being in my feminine pretty much every single day because I've always felt the need to be in control because I've always felt like I was the one who had to be mm -hmm. in control. Um, and so that was in my home life. And as you know, I was married before and in that relationship, I, I definitely felt like I was the one who had to take care of everything. Um, and so in this relationship with Keenan, I, I don't feel that way. Um, and I feel like, I feel like Keenan is the one person and I might get emotional, but we welcome it being <laughs> your feminine girl, be vulnerable, baby. Uh, the one person I, I have actually felt safe with no matter what. Um, and, and just touching on like the anxiety in my life, that was something that was new to Keenan, like having to deal with a partner who had anxiety because he's very analytical, you know, things can be very black and white for him. Um, for so all men, just <laughs> okay. make that distinction. It's okay. true. Okay. They don't, they just don't think the way that we do. We're a tornado of emotions and they're stoic period. Right. So, you know, in moments where I was experiencing extreme anxiety, you know, he, 
his way of of getting me out of that was kind of like well you know breathe in and breathe out and you know everything is fine and and for me in those moments it wasn't as simple as that um but it's something that together we've worked on and so i had to learn even in my moments of anxiety to and i didn't realize this at the time to be honest but to learn to 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 let go and not be so masculine in those moments mm-hmm. because he was telling me things that would help me get out of the feelings of anxiety that I was having, you know, taking a deep breath and holding it and then releasing it and, you know, telling me how my body was physically responding. Um, And those were things that I didn't necessarily want to hear, but realizing now in allowing him to help me through those situations, I was actually in my feminine energy. Um, And, and it's worked really, really well. Um, so I want to touch on that a little bit too. And, and the thing that we talk a lot about on the show is holding space. And that is like, it's a fairly new term, I would say. And it's something that I don't think a ton of people are familiar with, but you, again, you're exercising that. And really what it means is that typically like when a woman has an issue and if we're in our masculine, because here's the reality, when you're in a panic attack or you're in anxiety, you're in your head you're in your masculine period. And it's not until you get into your heart where that's where you calm down and you go, okay, I'm totally blowing whatever this feeling is out of proportion. And then, you know, I'm sure, I mean, men have panic attacks too, but definitely not at the rate that women do. We just do. But when a man, their instinct is to fix, 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 right? Right. That's the hunter. That's the guy, that's the aggressor, you know, the one who's going to fix this shit before it gets out of control. And so when women really just need somebody to hold space, just hold space for me, just be there and like, let it out. And a lot of um, like David data, he wrote the way of the superior man. And he talks a lot about how, you know, it's akin to an ocean. So like, we need the guy to be standing there still and we got to, the water's going to go around him. And as long as you know, he's in that spot and he's not going anywhere, um, the odds are good that you're going to eventually come to that feeling of safety and just releasing. But he has to really, because I think a lot of men just go eventually, oh my God, I can't handle this. Like she's right. too crazy. She's too irrational, da, 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 all this stuff when we're not. We have hormonal cycles, all that sort of thing. And I'm not suggesting that men should take abuse in in any way, shape or form, but sometimes like we may seem irrational because we probably like, imagine, I always say to Ken, I'm like, imagine how it feels up in here. Right. Like, this is all you're seeing. Imagine what the hell is going on upstairs. Like it ain't pretty. Let me tell you. So, um, so Keenan, let's, let me see, kind of see what you're feeling. Like when you, and again, I mean, your, your upbringing too, there was adversity and challenges throughout and, um, your, your age group at, even at 35, it still wasn't taught to that vulnerability was a good thing. That feeling your feelings was a good thing. Like you still had a, you know, your generation, our generation of parenting is way different than our parents were way different. We tell boys to cry and to feel vulnerable. It's a beautiful thing. Talk a little bit about your upbringing or your childhood and how it kind of translated into what type of man you were and maybe how you've developed into the type of man you are now, or were you always this great? <laughs> well, I can't say that I'm great now, but I can say I've, uh, I've practiced. I've worked on myself. I know, um, growing up, I, I was unfortunate enough to lose my father at a young age. Uh, I've lost my father when I was 11. So to find, a uh, strong male figure wasn't exactly like in the cards for me. My mom decided to work a few jobs. I used to have to do my own thing at home, cook, clean, whatever I had to do to to make it happen so that she could provide. Um, When it comes to, especially when it came to being a man, I didn't really know how to stand up, but I was always looking and that's kind of what led me into joining the military at 16, like at a very young age. Um, my mom kind of signed off and said, if this is something that you want to do, you know, try it. And I felt like, you know, I, I hate to say it or glorify it, but, you know, I grew up on Rambo and, and um, these big machoistic movies, you know, where boys don't cry and, you know, you just go out and you fight your hardest and, you know, everybody's a karate kid, so on and so forth. 
But in reality, life isn't like that. You know, you have, you have hard times, you have up times, you have down times, but boys weren't supposed to talk about that, you know? And I've learned that, especially um, going through my tours through the military, going through, um, I guess, relationships and also ups and downs that, especially in the last maybe five to 10 years, life is really about having a balance mm-hmm. having um and for me it's about security being that um i can i can be secure right now in my in myself because my balance comes from my partner my balance comes from um her her level headedness whereas i'm a little bit more impetuous you know and and my family definitely sees that, you know, it's, it's where the, the, the blends of us are, are beautiful, but they're, we work at it, you know? <laughs> I do. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I, I'd like to say though, um, you know, learning about it and speaking with you, speaking um, with other like-minded people who are trying to be above the fold and not just, um, blend in with the status quo it it allows you to know that I thought I was strong before you know I was uh I could say I was a warrior I was a soldier you know for for 10 years of my life and I'm 50 times stronger than I ever was fighting anything before you know and that's and that's just being secure that's just knowing who I am wow that's beautiful oh mama for those of you who are listening and not watching, she's about to cry for the second time of the show. It's been 20 minutes. I anticipate her crying about three more times. Wow. Um, but so, I mean, and that's the interesting part about that is that um, the sh- like, especially with all the stuff going on right now, right? Like with the, the unrest all over the world and in the U S et cetera, all that, I think, I, and you, you, you guys know me well, and you know my heart well, and I feel in my heart, deeply in my heart, that men, wounded men are the ones doing all of the damage in our world. And that goes for, you know, all sorts of terrorism and all sorts of war and all sorts of pain and all of those things. And I think it's important that we have these conversations, especially with the guys, because they still have this idea that sharing your feelings and all this other stuff is just garbage and it doesn't, it doesn't make you a man. And here's the trick. Here's the thing about it. If I know my man is capable of being vulnerable, right? And so he's able to identify his emotions. I feel a million times safer with that man. Absolutely. It's the exact opposite of what you guys are taught. Like Mm -hmm. a man who can get in touch with his feminine divine and his feminine energy. Holy shit. That's a game changer. Right. Like a hundred percent. So let's talk a bit about the feminine masculine or the feminine Keenan. So obviously you're like, I've seen you, you know, you and I've had very, very deep conversations and you're always so beautiful and sharing your heart with me. And I appreciate that about you so much. Talk a little bit about how that, how, like how you came to that, because you still even, you know, 16 to 26, if you're in the military, mm-hmm. That's not that long to come to this version of yourself. Like what, what started you thinking, you know what, maybe I need to dig a bit deeper into my self and feel more and not stifle it. Well, honestly, I think, um, I was always into personal development. Like I'm, um, I like to exercise. I've, um, as a, as a younger man, I tried to look into, um, Buddhism and yoga and, um, kind of meditation trying to figure out what can not necessarily I don't necessarily need to talk to other people but let me try and figure it out in my own head and um I think the biggest thing that led me to the break was kind of um meeting Carrie to be honest this hard head here she she pushes she pushes but in a way that makes me have to test myself and challenge myself but it also um, allows for for growth you know and i wouldn't have expected it and um and i'd say i'm pleasantly surprised <laughs> with it 
<laughs> but also, like, let's give credit where credit is due because lots of men meet wonderful women like Carrie. Not, lots of men meet Carrie <laughs> and uh, like Carrie, right. but yeah. don't shift. So I think, like, she's she has a compelling reason. She is a compelling reason to grow for sure. Uh -huh. But I think it's important to note that it's something in you that is choosing continuously to grow and to take that path and that it's you have a partner who supports it and that's the beautiful thing and I think that's why you guys work so well together because you're, you're both supportive of it and you're both striving all of the time like it's not you know like the pace is different than everybody else so what whatever like you're on your own journey right. and I think it is important to note that um, a lot of guys go this is bullshit. I'm not like, what are you talking about? Feelings? Like what? Meditate? What? Uh -huh. So I think uh -huh. it's, it's like a, you guys are a perfect storm really. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. Um, if, I can, if I can just go back to one thing that you yep. said quickly, cause you were saying, you know, when you meet a man who, who allows you to feel safe. Right. Um, I think with Keenan and I, we both came from backgrounds that kind of were, yeah, we were in relationships and we thought that we were doing well in those relationships, but I don't think that we were being 100% who we were. And then when we met, it was kind of like, you know what? I'm done with bullshit. He's done with bullshit. We found a safe place with each other. Um, and I think we both kind of knew who we wanted to be or where we were going. And then that allowed us to feel safe with one another to say like, okay, this is how I feel. This is what I'm feeling. This is where I'm at. Um, and we were able to do that with each other. And so it just helped us grow, I guess, that much stronger as a couple. Right. Um, and so it wasn't anything I think that I don't think like we sat down and intentionally said, okay, this is what we're going to plan to do. But mm -hmm. our spirits and our souls just kind of felt that way with one another. And, and yeah, that's what we've been doing. Yeah, something happened and we just dropped the shroud. It just, yeah. Like, he mm -hmm. made me, he it. made me feel safe. I made him feel safe. And in doing that, we were able to be vulnerable with one another. And I think that's one of the most important things in our relationship is that we're able to be vulnerable with one another. Um, when he's feeling off, you know, sometimes it takes me a second to realize, okay, something's bothering him. So my first reaction is sometimes to just be like, what's wrong with you? Right. But instead I say, you know, okay, hold on. Something's, you know, is something going on? Like what's going on with you? And we do that with one another. And, and it's just, it makes, it makes things so much easier. I don't know it's, it's like, it's communicating, right? It's listening. It's not, and you're not trying to fix it necessarily. And he's not trying to fix it and all that. Like that's, that's really the thing is just holding, they're looking up, are there kids around? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hi kids. Um, but yeah, so, okay. So let's talk a little bit about how, so when I, we talk about polarity on the show quite a bit and polarity is really just that balance where, you know, the feminine is being the feminine, the masculine is being the masculine and recognizing you know, when to strengthen those parts of each other. And because the reality is like nowadays, often what happens is the feminine, the woman goes into her masculine and then the man goes into his feminine and there's no polarity. And when there's no polarity, there's no intimacy, there's no connection, there's resentment, there's all those sorts of things. Since you guys seem to have it, you know, relatively well figured out, I know you'll say not all figured out, but it looks uh -huh. like you do. Are there, Carrie, are there times when you think, um, you could, you, you know, are there ways that you think I'm going to make him feel more like the hero? I'm making, I'm going to let him feel more like the king, like that you're conscious of that maybe you can share, you know, just ideas where you might see an opportunity. And if not, you know, are there some ways that you can think of right now that you might want to do that in the future? That's an interesting question. I don't, I don't know that, I don't know that I've ever actually sat down and thought about that or like in a situation felt like, okay, um, I think something that I do that maybe I didn't used to do is just let him be who he is. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, instead of always saying, okay, like this is going to be our schedule for the day, or this is going to be this or this or this or whatever, you know, he, he says, okay, this is what's going to happen or whatever. And I know that sounds small, but for me, it's a huge thing because that's a big shift. That's a huge shift. Um, yeah. So that's just something where I'm, you know, 
he, I know that sometimes he likes to just as an example, okay, he'll wake up and make breakfast or whatever. And then that's how the day gets started and whatever. Those are the types of things that he likes to do for me and for our family. So, you know, me not getting up in the morning and rushing around and being, okay, we have to do this and do this and do this. Um, I'm trying to think of, you know, something that might seem bigger that I could do to make him that's, feel okay. That's not, that's not a small thing though. Like what that is, is that's exactly, it's, it's sort of akin to like letting a guy change the light bulb. Like, obviously we can do that. Right. But there's four archetypes for men, the magician, the priest, the king, and the warrior, sorry, and the lover, not the priest. And when we let them be the warrior, the king, or the magician, the magician is the one who would change the light bulb. The magician is the one who's going to make the breakfast. Like, it's really just sort of getting out of the way and like letting him show his love to you, to us through service. Right. And I, and I see it all the time. Women like, just let me do it. I can do better. Just let me do it. Just stop it. Like, or they'll say, can you do the dishes? And then the guy starts the dishes and we don't like how they're doing them. So we get in there and bitch and complain about how they're doing the dishes. So what's really going to happen? Eventually they're not going to do the dishes. Exactly. And And you're just, so it's a, that's a massive thing. Like that's not a small thing at all. That's a massive thing. And I think women that are listening should really understand this one because obviously Carrie can make the breakfast, obviously, but allowing him and getting the F out of his way, you know, energetically even to let him show up that way, that's magic. And that is how you honor a man. It's, it, it may seem small, but it's honestly the most humongous thing ever and not enough women do it. So thank you for that. That's, that's a beautiful um, thing that you're doing. No problem. I wanted to just touch on the thing that you said there too, because that's something that I used to do all the time. And even specifically with dishes, right? The way you load the dishwasher, the way you put them away, like I would bitch and complain about well, why aren't these things getting done? But then when they were getting done, I was rearranging everything to the way I wanted it to be done. So it's not a perfect science, but you know, we've, we've got a a nice balance. I feel like, you know, like Keenan does the laundry. I don't do the laundry. I'm supposed to put it away, but we normally end up with like, 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 I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to to put them (laughs) away, but yeah, like those, I mean, it's in everything, right? It's in our communication. Yes. It's in the way that our household is run. It's the way, in the way that our children are disciplined. Um, and even in those conversations, you know, um, and I don't know if maybe this is something that we want to talk about later, but because we do have a boy and a girl, and then we have an older boy and a girl and an older boy, like they're, the way that we deal with them, Ethan, you know, Elijah is an incredibly sensitive boy and so the way that we speak to him even in those types of things and the way that Keenan handles him like I have to step back sometimes and just let Keenan navigate that and he's learning to do it in a much more loving way because he sees that Elijah's the type of person who you know you can't come at him Arya you could just say whatever and she's like no problem but Elijah as a sensitive boy and as you know he's he's an empath so um, just allowing Keenan to, and not allowing, because I, I personally don't like the word allow. It's not, I'm not no. allowing Keenan to do mm-hmm. something. This is what, you know, this is the role that each of us plays in, in our relationship, but it's from everything to, like I said, making breakfast in the morning to, you know, putting the dog out the, at, at night and who, and you know, where we are with all of that. So Keenan, when you, so let's talk a bit about the the dishes thing and like, Cause that's super classic. That's like, that's a thing that happens all the time is that women complain that you're not helping around enough around the house enough. So why don't you do this? Blah, blah, blah. So like, this is really for the women listening to hear it from a man's perspective. But like, if you've done something and all we do is complain, what does that do to your masculine energy? And what does that do for you? Like, how does that feel when we're constantly nagging and complaining about how you're doing the thing we're asking you to do? Well, I always, I always like to say, um, you know, if, if, if you're not doing the work, don't complain about the work, you <laughs> know, story. so it, it hurts <laughs> to say that, like, you know, let's say we're using the dishes. If I, if I finish dishes and, 
um, let's say, you know, the soap suds are still running off of one of the spoons or something, I don't know. <laughs> to, to redo all of the dishes is just not, it's not a good thing, you know? I'm not going to do dishes tomorrow. Right. Like, you're going to do dishes tomorrow. Right. Because I can't, I can't do it that way, you know? Um, it's, it's more for me about trusts. It's more about allowing things to just be, you know? Because... I think if um, we try to control everything, it, it it just it sets a wrong tone, you know. And I guess yeah. we can we can relate it to energies for sure because um, I know for sure my my guard's gonna be up if I just did even if it's ten minutes of work and then it's just one criticism, but the work is already done, you know. Right. Sometimes you just gotta let it be, or or choose choose your battles. Choose. But how you know, do you? So talk, so what's the response though? Like, are you, I mean, you said next time you're not doing dishes, but do you feel like I've heard many guys say you feel, they feel less like a man and they, it's like, they feel feel like a child. Yeah. You feel slighted. You feel childlike. You feel like, um, I can't do a medial activity, but Mm. you're going to tell me how to do it. Mm. Okay. Um, and I think now it's to the point where we can speak to each other in a, in a, in a semi-cordial manner without me getting, you know, angry. But before I would, I would, it it could literally get me upset if I, if I did, you know, let's say I mowed the lawn, but you know, one line wasn't good. I don't want to hear about that line. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You just did the friggin' lawn. Shut your mouth, woman. You know, know, like let the lawn be. But um, but it, <laughs> let it, the lawn it, be. I like yeah, that. You know, but it, it 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 takes away, and it also it makes you not want to to provide. Like I like to right. do things in service. I like to. That's kind of how I show my love for sure. Um, and the the big thing for me is that having a job done is um isn't isn't the entirety you know it doesn't have to be 100 percent. you know there can be imperfections but um but pointless complaints if the complaint's valid and it's something that needs to be done or if i'm not doing something properly then i obviously need to check myself that right. would be something that i would be upset about but um if it was a job very decently done right you know i i don't want the single complaint yeah for sure yeah it's gonna withdraw me from the situation whether whether it be positive or probably in a in a rather negative manner <laughs> well that's yeah like it, it, you know we we joke about it but it's like putting your balls in our purse like mm-hmm. when you keep doing that kind of behavior eventually the man's like good yeah. luck sweetie i'm not doing anything and when there's and that's polarity right and once that's gone you're you're close to divorcing someone's cheating or something really unpleasant happening mm-hmm. <clears throat> so what are some ways that you guys, you know, now that we're a little deeper into all the things, what they mean and all that kind of stuff, like, what are some ways do you think that you could tell other couples to really honor each other's um, energy? Because like for me, for, you know, women always say like, he never makes a plan, Mm -hmm. but when he makes a plan, you're going to complain about it. So for me, it's like, don't complain about the plan. Just like shut up and go with the plan. It's a beautiful plan. I don't care. Because to me, that's just an, uh, that person loves me. And so they've taken the time to make a plan, but like, do you guys have any ways that you, you know, sort of honor each other's energies like that, where you might Keenan, you might plan something Carrie, you might, you know, outside of the breakfast, like maybe give one or two examples of how you guys really focus on staying balanced and focus about, because I find that you guys are focused on each other. Mm -hmm. right? Like you're not, Carrie's not all about Carrie and Keenan's not all about Keenan. It's like you, and that's the magic. Mm -hmm. That's where couples really need to be where Carrie's all about Keenan and Keenan's all about Carrie. If you're focused on meeting each other's needs, then your needs are always met. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So maybe if you have any ways that you meet each other's needs on a regular basis. Um, I'll start. I'll start. Uh, I would say like, I got a list, darling. I got a list. I got a list. Uh, Let me, (laughs) um, I'd say, okay, it's going to sound pretty blatant. Like it's going to sound pretty blah, but listening is the key. Mm. Like, um, before any argument, before any fight, before any, 
disruption, even before a joyous occasion, there's always a conversation. You know, there's always some kind of peace before. And um, I think the biggest thing is if you get out of your own way and instead of, you know, trying to, to, to put your own two cents in, sometimes just listening will, will help, you know. I know Carrie... One thing I like to do for her is that she's been doing um, a meditation um, and she's, she's guiding a meditation as well for another group of people. Um, but uh, her meditations are done in the morning. Um, and it's, it's a good time. It's an it's a early morning ritual. You can get it going. But for me, I think giving her that space and that time, mm -hmm. even if it's only 20 minutes or 30 minutes, it allows her to get her her mindset. It allows her to get her break, you know, instead of, oh, well, what are we going to do for breakfast? Or how's your day? Or well, what are we planning for the day? You know, um, and I wouldn't say that it was something that she asked for initially. She just said, hey, I'm thinking about starting meditation. And then we said, how can we, like, how can we make that happen? You know, right. we have two little ones under seven running around the place. It's not very easy to get a meditation in, but, you know, th those little things, making a plan, listening to it, those things help a lot. That's a beautiful. Lot. That's yeah. awesome. Care? Um. <laughs> <laughs> how do you honor your man? <laughs> um. I think, well, similarly to what he was saying, just like giving him his space, right? Like he, um, he's been playing this one game called Clash of Clans for yeah. like six years. Oh, you, you know that time. Oh, I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big somebody plays it guaranteed. So <laughs> <laughs> that's his downtime. And that's what, you know, gives him the peace that he needs or whatever. And so, you know, he, Sometimes he's like, babe, I'm, I'm going to war. I need 20 minutes or whatever the case is, right? <laughs> so like, so he goes and he does that. And most recently, like moving to this house, um, he's been doing a lot of gardening. So he's got his plants and that's like, that really puts him in a, like a peaceful mindset. And, you know, it just, it helps him um, just be comfortable like throughout the day. So, I mean, those are things that he needs um mm -hmm. so sometimes he's out in the the garden for like an hour and i'm like where's keenan okay he's outside you know and those are things where before i may have been like well i want some time or right but this is something that i know that he needs so you know giving him his space to do that and and do the things that he enjoys doing without you know being a nag mm -hmm. that's yeah. awesome thanks guys thank you oh they're yeah. so cute i want to vomit <laughs> it's my show i can say that if i want to there you right. go. i'm just teasing you is there anything else you guys want to share before you wrap it up i think just quickly i wanted to add and this might be getting you know a little bit deep at the end of the conversation but getting into my feminine energy was not easy at all um like we were talking about our backgrounds um i didn't just come from an unstable you know household my parents fought all the time my mom and I come from a long line of women who wear the pants mm -hmm. in the family um and that was sort of something that was taught to us the man yep. does not wear the pants in the family the woman does and if you don't not that there's something wrong with you but you're not doing it right in your relationship and you had said earlier, you know, that leads to divorce, it leads to cheating or whatever. My dad cheated on my mom multiple times and they ended up getting divorced. Um, and that was because he probably felt as small as a mustard seed because of the way that he was spoken to and the way that he was treated. Um, and you had said something earlier too, as well about, you know, wounded men and hurt men. Um, I think the same goes for, for women as well. The hurt Absolutely. people, period, mm -hmm. just hurt people, hurt people. Hurt people. Hurt people. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so if you are not in a relationship where you're committed to serving the needs of the person that you're with, then you need to do some serious self-reflection because it's not like you were saying, it's not about, it's not about me, Carrie. It's about us like together. And, you know, we meet each other's needs as well as meeting our own needs. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Um, and so if you're not, if you're not willing to put in that work or, or to do that, then, you know, it's just going to be a continuous cycle. And it's unbalanced. It'll be unbalanced forever. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, uh, you have to be about them and they have to be about you at the same time, at the same level, at the same percentage, all of it, or it's, one's giving a hundred, the other one might be giving 50 and that 50 that you've left on the table is enough to make that other person pause and think, okay, is this right? But, and I think I want to touch on the, the pants and the fat, you know, how many times I've heard that from Ken's family, from other people, Oh, you must wear the pants in the family. Right. P.S. We don't want to wear the pants in the family. Exactly. Exactly. It's a job we didn't want. We never signed up for it. We were just taught this way. And it's a strong man who can come and take those pants off. Right. And we welcome that truthfully, yeah. like joking aside, yeah. like, but then on the flip side of that, we as women have to be the ones to be able to relinquish that. When we say we want to relinquish it, we can't say, please help me, but only do it the way I want you to do it. Exactly. Because that's still a masculine trait and that's, there's no place for that. But anyway, <laughs> thank you so much, you guys. That was well, fun. And I'm you. so happy that you did it. We're happy um, to be here. It's dark now where you are. I can see the sun. I know. Uh, <laughs> the sun setting. The sun setting. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. We were doing natural light. We didn't it's all good. Light. Sorry. All right. Uh, I love you both. Love you. Like love crazy. You. And I will talk to you soon. Awesome. Yes. Okay.